You can use Photoshop to import 3D models. You can also texture them and you can do all kinds of cool things. So for the next few lessons, I just want to briefly show you how you could incorporate 3D with your After Effects workflow. Now you might not be a 3D artist, but chances are good that someone along your pipeline of production is a 3D artist and will be providing you with a 3D logo, maybe some buildings, cars, a moon, you never know. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to bring a 3D object in, how to add a quick texture, and then how to move around inside of Photoshop as far as the 3D tools. And last but not least, how to save the file and then bring it into After Effects. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about this 3D panel. If you don't see this 3D panel, simply go to Window, 3D. The 3D panel has several tools here that look kind of familiar to the ones inside of After Effects, that unified camera and those other camera tools. These allow us to move around in the 3D space. So we can rotate, we can roll, we can pan, which is left and right, up and down, and all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a 3D model that I created of some castle walls. I'm going to go to the 3D menu instead of going to the file menu and choosing to open. So the 3D menu is your one-stop shop. 3D, new layer from 3D file. Now on my desktop I save the file as walls.obj and you can find this in your work files folder if you'd like to follow along. Likewise, if you guys have your own 3D applications, let me show you some of the other file formats that uh, are compatible with Photoshop. So if you look on the format, we see that we can choose 3D Studio Max, Collada, Google Earth, U3D, and Wavefront. Now, almost every time I work with Photoshop or any other application, I typically try to save my 3D objects as OBJ. I find that it works with the most uh, applications. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and open. And here are the walls. Now, as I mentioned before, we have these 3D tools that you can find here and you can also find up here. The first tool, of course, we're going to use is the regular old tool so we can rotate around our object. And I can go ahead and click and move around. Now, your eye might have actually been drawn to this little guy here. This is our widget. And with this widget, we can click on this little gray bar and drag it to a new location. This is a very handy tool that is a shortcut to all these. And it's more interactive, I think, because it gives you nice visual cues. For example, you see these little semicircular wedges? When you hover over one of those, you can then click and you can now move that object in that axis. Likewise, I can grab the blue one and rotate it, and the green as well. It's very handy. You see this little box in the center? If I click right in the center, I can scale in proportion. If I grab one of these little boxes here, I can scale in that axis. And all I'm doing is clicking and holding it down and moving my mouse. We also have these arrows. The arrows allow you to click and move your object by simply clicking and holding your mouse down. So as you can see, it's really easy to move around just using the widget instead of going to all these tools here. But of course, if you feel more comfortable, just grab one of these tools and you can do the same thing. Just move your mouse around like so. I find it a lot more uh, simple to use the widget instead. So now that we've taken a look at how to import an object and how to manipulate it. Next, let's talk about how we can look at some render settings and add a very simple gradient texture with a little bit of noise to this object.